Hey guys, if you don't have your materials, pause this video and grab your materials. So in today's lesson, we talked about how we're using expanded form to multiply. And the first example that I'm going to show you is going to show you how we have all four steps and I have them all separated out so that you can see it. Now, when we normally solve our problems, we're only going to have one rectangle. So our problem today is five times 157. And the very first thing that we need to do before we can even set up our problem is we have to expand our larger number. So the one digit is actually five times 100 because it's in the hundreds place. Our tens digit is actually five times 50 because it's five tens. And then in our ones place, we have five times seven because there's only seven in our ones place. So step number one, well, we're going to actually have to draw a rectangle. Now you could draw your rectangle in any size that you would like, just as long as you know that you have enough room to be able to write your answer inside of the rectangle. For me, I like to draw the bigger place value gets the biggest rectangle, then a medium rectangle and a smaller rectangle. If you want all of your rectangles to be the same size, go for it. It really doesn't matter. This just helps me visualize. So step number one, it says that we have to multiply the hundreds place. So remember, it's the hundreds place based off of the value of that digit. So five times 100, remember we still have to find our basic facts. So five times one is five, and then I add on my two zeros. So five times 100 equals 500. Step number two says multiply the tens place. So five times 50, let's find our basic fact, which is five times five, and that's 25. We add on our one zero, and our answer is 250. Step number three says now we have to multiply the ones place. So five times seven, we know the answer to that since it's already a basic fact problem, is 35. Now our final step is to add the partial products. So it's called a partial product because our answer to multiplication problems are called our products. But we don't have our final product yet, we just have part of our answers. So that's where the term partial product comes from. So we have 500, our first green box, plus our second green box, which is 250, and our final green box, which is 35. And since these are our partial products or part of our answer, we have to add it all together. So zero plus zero plus five equals zero, zero plus five plus three equals eight, and five plus two plus nothing equals 785. So we know that the total product of five times 157 is 758. So now let's look at a problem that we're more than likely always going to have. It's going to take a lot of time for us to draw out four rectangles every time. So instead, let's use one rectangle to solve our whole expanded form multiplication problem. So before we solve our problem, we always have to break it apart into expanded form. So right now on your board, what I would like for you to do is ignore the rectangle for now. But what I want you to do is to expand the number four times 625. So on your board, I want for you to write four times blank plus blank plus blank. And in those blanks, I want for you to expand 623. Pause your video and go ahead and expand 623. Go. All right, so now that you've expanded it, what you should have on your board is our six digit is in the hundreds place, so that's worth 600. Our two digit is in the tens place, so that's worth 20. And our three digit is in the ones place, so that's worth three. So right now on your board, you should have four times 600 plus 20 plus three. Now we need to draw our rectangle. So my rectangle is already here. You can draw your rectangle to look like mine, or like I said previously, it can be in any size that you would like, as long as you can fit your answers inside of your rectangles. Go ahead and pause this video and draw your rectangle. Okay, so now that your rectangle is drawn, now we need to actually set up our problem. So the ones digit that we're multiplying by is always gonna go on the left-hand side of our rectangle. So our four is going to go here. Setting up your problem with me, go ahead and put your 600 on top of your first rectangle. Go ahead and write that down as I'm writing it. You'll probably get done before me because it's hard to write on a computer like this. 
600, then we should write our 20 in the middle because that's our middle, our tens place, and then our three. Okay, so remember like we saw before, we did hundreds place, then tens place, then our ones place. I would like for you to go ahead and solve our partial products. Four times 600, four times 20, and four times three. Pause this video and go ahead and solve. Okay, so now that you've gone ahead and solved your partial products, let's go ahead and check our answer. So we should have four times 600, four times six is 24. Then we add on our zeros, so we should have added on two zeros. Next, we have four times 20, so four times two equals eight, and then we add on our one zero, and then our ones place four times three equals 12. We don't need to add any zeros on there because we don't have any in our problem. So we found our partial products, but we don't have our full product yet. And our last step is we need to add our partial products. So this is where we need to write out our addition problem. Now, it's could be tempting to add this in our brains, but make sure that you're really double checking your work and writing it out. So 2,400 plus 80 plus 12, add it together. Zero plus zero plus two equals two. Zero plus eight plus one equals nine, four and two. 2,492, all right. When you're working on your exit ticket, make sure that you are drawing your rectangle and don't forget that you're not done until you add your partial products. Good luck on your exit ticket. Double check your work and take your time.